I'm Michelle Hutchinson, and I've been living in the South Snohomish County and the surrounding area for over 20 years. I'm 53, and I serve my community as a volunteer chaplain. I'm a registered Washington State emergency worker, and I earn my living as a laboratory assistant at a diagnostic laboratory for a regional laboratory in Seattle, Washington. Hi, I'm Brooke. Uh, I am 16 years old and I have lived in uh, Edmonds for my entire life. I am currently a junior at Shorewood High School in Shoreline and I serve my community as the student representative on the Edmonds City Council. And I also volunteer with the Gene Kim Foundation, which has a goal to empower the homeless through education. Yeah, so Michelle, I just wanted to ask you, um, where were you when coronavirus kind of became prominent and how did it start to impact your daily life and kind of your job, I guess, and volunteering activities? Well, thankfully, I was visiting my 86 year old mother in Missouri for her birthday. Uh, nobody thought much of uh, the virus and me being a potential carrier uh, but as the news reports were becoming more and the population uh, starting to increase with positive diagnoses, um, then people didn't want to shake hands with me or hug me. <laughs> and my uh, visit with my mother, who lives in independent living, pretty soon the social activities that we were both um, participating in together as mother and daughter, uh, we were, we had, those were getting canceled. And we were, um, even morning coffee and breakfast down in the multi-purpose room uh, started to become canceled. And by the time it was time for me to leave and go home, it was total lockdown. And so now how about you, Brooke? Uh, where where were you when Corona first started impacting our area? I had just gotten back from like a music festival type thing for my high school and uh, my uncle was driving me to the Swedish Edmonds campus which I volunteer at um, and he was telling me about how this could kind of exponentially increase and a month later I mean school was canceled so by mid March. Um, I had been tracking it for a while and we normally get out early on Wednesdays and so it was a half day. And I, all I remember was I had two tests the day after and then another test on that Friday after. And so all I could think of when I was getting home um, was to study. And then I got this message in my email from the superintendent saying that school had been totally canceled until mm -hmm. April 27th. Um, wow. And then ultimately, you know, I thought, I thought it was an early spring break. <laughs> I didn't mm -hmm. think that it could really um, get out of hand to where we are now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I, I kind of, I treated the early days of the, the break as kind of like a spring break type thing where I would kind of go out. And I think I hung out with a few friends, which looking back on it would be irresponsible, but we didn't know at that time. Um, yeah. But ultimately when Governor Inslee announced the further lockdowns, you know, we went into full lockdown mode. We got our masks. We, we tried to stay out of the house as much as possible. My mom, um, my mom couldn't go to work. Her work was shut down. The preschool was shut down that I also work at. Um, and yeah, so we spent those months home and um, I guess they were enjoyable. It was some nice family time, but it definitely caught me off guard looking back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I definitely wish I, I planned ahead and I wish I knew more um, before it kind of ballooned out into this whole issue. Um, yeah. What exactly did you kind of do with COVID? Um, how did it kind of impact the rest of your daily life and like kind of your social interactions and maybe people wanting to avoid you knowing that maybe you worked with COVID? My role in helping with COVID testing, well, I prepared samples, including pipetting sample into lysis tubes and those tubes were then run through testing equipment to determine a positive or negative result. 
As far as my volunteer work goes, as a, a Washington State emergency worker volunteer, um, most of my involvement with that were drills and meetings and trainings, which is all wonderful. And occasionally working at the cold weather shelter for the homeless. It's uh, been really, really wonderful to be able to help during a time of crisis. Uh, never would I want to be sitting at home and worrying and wondering. Um, I did not experience the kind of isolation that some people did because my job happened to be medical lab and I was able to help with the COVID testing. And then my ministry uh, is uh, in involving helping those in crisis. So uh, it's been uh, a little bit easier on me in terms of loneliness and isolation. And it certainly does help that we have these avenues of uh, virtual uh, means, Zoom meetings and YouTube and, and Messenger and social media and so forth really does help. Now, tell me, tell me more about um, the area of impact that gave you the most sense of being involved with helping out in the community during the pandemic? It was about uh, mid-September after the Edmonds Youth Commission meetings had resumed. Um, mm -hmm. The Edmonds Youth Commission kind of advocates for youth legislation, youth priorities in um, municipal government for Edmonds. And so we had, had a guest speaker um, and she talked about like the homelessness issue in Snohomish County, especially among kids and adults and how that all kind of ties into their education. And so that's kind of when she referred me to the Gene Kim Foundation, which I now volunteer with. And so right now I'm currently designing their website and redesigning their website, but I've also spent time at their, um, at their hygiene center. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically there I help out with clean, kind of cleaning the showers, doing the laundry, um, as well as like signing people up for showers, kind of packaging food, organizing clothes, sorting through clothes. Um, and I really do enjoy my work there. I enjoy helping the homeless and kind of getting them back on their feet. I think it's such an important thing during this time to do. Um, unfortunately, like I haven't been able to get back there as often as I was going in like, you know, early September to about mid-November. Um, but I've been able to pick up more advocacy and volunteering work uh, on the Youth Commission um, to advocate for Youth of Edmonds. But Michelle, so that, that was really cool hearing about your activation um, in the Snohomish County, uh, mm -hmm. was it Medical Reserve Corps? Mm -hmm, that's um, right. I'm just curious, how do you like apply for a volunteering position through them? Okay, well, first thing that they told me was to go to your fire department, your local fire department and sign up for community emergency response training. And I did, and it turns out that anybody, any citizen can take this training and it's mostly free. You have to buy your own supplies. So I got maybe eight weeks, 10 weeks of of training in very basic firefighter duties, light search and rescue. And then from there, I started to meet members of Snohomish County Medical Reserve Corps. And I believe that they do want you to have that community emergency response training prior to signing up for that. But again, uh, any citizen who's interested uh, can go on ahead and sign up for free training. Here's a question. What benefits has the lockdown given you in your life? You know, it's it's been kind of life-changing for sure. I, I'm sure it's been life-changing for all of us. We're, liter we're literally living through major history right now. And so, you know, I've been able to reflect on kind of my values and, and how I can make the biggest impact um, and I've, I've taken on roles that allow, would allow me to do that, such as um, through the Edmonds Youth Commission and advocacy work and through the Gene Kim Foundation. Um, 
And then, especially on the Edmond City Council as a student representative, I really enjoy that position and kind of learning more about the municipal le legislative process and putting my voice in there when I can, especially mm -hmm. during an unprecedented time. Um, and just kind of advocating for the underserved and vulnerable population. I see myself, you know, expanding beyond, you know, who I currently am at, at this rate with the continued pandemic. Um, but I'm definitely, you know, taking things, I'm trying to think, take things slow. Well, it was wonderful chatting with you and talking about our stories and, and how this historical time has unfolded in each, uh, in each other's lives. Looking forward to next time. Have a wonderful and blessed evening, Brooke. Thank you so much. Same to you. Happy 2021.